For over five centuries, people have admired the statue of David by Michelangelo. It's a symbol of perfection. But two decades ago, researchers figured out that David does not have perfect eyes. At least not according to modern day perceptions. When we zoom in, we can see that his eyes are not looking in exactly the same direction. In other words, they are misaligned, a condition that is generally known as strabismus. Nowadays, doctors would like to treat it as it leads to double vision and eye strain. But interestingly, David is not the only Renaissance depiction that suffers from this disease. How about this goddess in Botticelli's The Birth of Venus? The deviation is not that big here, but there is definitely an asymmetry of the eyes, which we can see better by looking at the close-up of her eyes. The misalignment is clearer in this portrait from around 1511 by Raphael, entitled Portrait of Tommaso Ingirami. Now you may argue that Raphael wanted to paint a truthful portrait of this intellectual, and if he suffered from some eye disease, that would be something that he would like to include in the portrait. But for David and Venus, that argument does not fly. They are idealized figures from the Bible and mythology. So why did three of the greatest Renaissance artists created people with misaligned eyes? The phenomenon of these misaligned eyes is known in Italian as strabismo di venere, which literally means strabismus of Venus, referring to the goddess in Botticelli's painting. In the past there was a British translation, Venetian squint, but this word seems to have gone out of fashion. It's not a large asymmetry of the eyes, but a rather subtle one, like in Botticelli's work. Not a relatively big one, like in this portrait from 1537 by Bronzino. And as Venus was the goddess of beauty, strabismus became a sign of beauty and it was quickly picked up by some other artists as something charming. And still today, if you would tell an Italian woman that she has strabismo di venere, it would be considered a compliment. It's like instead of saying that someone's eyes are somewhat asymmetric, she has eyes like Venus, the goddess of beauty, or more generally, that there is something special or fascinating to her eyes. In 1999, the Stanford group created a digital three-dimensional reconstruction of David, and using their computer model, it was very clear that the eyes of David were not aligned. They concluded that David suffered from a medical condition called exotropic strabismus, which means that the eyes diverge the opposite of being cross-eyed. The left eye of David was perfectly in line with the body's intended movement and looked at the intended target Goliath, but the direction of the right eye was off. Other research has shown that the eyes of Jesus in the Salvator Mundi are also squinting a little bit. One pupil is some 10 degrees off from where you would expect it to be. In this case, it's hard to see for myself and it is speculated that this case of strabismus is just because the model for Jesus would have suffered from a mild form of this misalignment. And some people suggest that the model for this work was Leonardo da Vinci himself, who, as we will hear in a bit, was one of the many artists suffering from strabismus. It is estimated that 10% of people suffer from some form of strabismus. These pictures show some more extreme cases, but in many cases the misalignment can be relatively subtle. Nowadays most people would not consider clearly misaligned eyes a sign of beauty. However, during the Renaissance, some artists tried to idealize their figures, which is abundantly clear if you look at the rest of the David and at Botticelli's Birth of Venus. And while there are not that many Renaissance paintings showing figures with strabismus, it's safe to conclude from the work shown here that a little bit of strabismus was not such a bad thing in terms of beauty. And even today, it may be something fascinating, like in people like Scarlett Johansson and Kate Moss, who also have a little asymmetry in their pupils. You can compare the presence of strabismo di venere with some other deliberate distortions of the human body that were considered beautiful. 
During the Mannerism period, which started two decades after Michelangelo sculpted his David, some bodily features were exaggerated. Like in this work by Parmigianino entitled Madonna with a long neck. Not only is her neck very long, her fingers and shoulders are also out of proportion. And the same idea has also been applied later, for example, in the Grande Odalisque painted in 1814 by Jean Auguste Dominique Ingres. The lower back of this concubine seems to stretch endlessly. And that is because Ingres added five additional vertebrae to her body. Not because he made some mistake, but because that would make her more sensuous. Renaissance artists would sometimes purposely create their figures with asymmetric eyes. And there was no shortage of models who suffered from some form of strabismus back in the day. It seems, however, that the phenomenon of misaligned eyes occurs more frequently among artists. It has been reported that among the painters suffering from strabismus were Albert Dürer, whom you can see here at age 22, but also artists like Leonardo da Vinci, Rembrandt, Picasso, Degas, Winslow Homer, Klimt, Edward Hopper, Marc Chagall, Andrew and N.C. Wyatt, and Jasper Johns. You can actually see the asymmetry in Rembrandt's eyes in some of his self-portraits, with one eye looking at the viewer, while the other eye seems to stray a bit to the side. And this is something that has been confirmed by careful research, measuring the distance between both pupils across all his self-portraits. By the way, this does not mean that we see misaligned eyes in every portrait that is made of someone with strabismus. And an important reason for that is that misaligned eyes does not have to be a permanent issue, something that is called intermittent strabismus. It leaves the question whether some forms of strabismus can actually be beneficial for a painter. There have been reports that this could be the case. For example for Picasso, whose condition would make it easier to perceive two-dimensional representations of a subject as he would sometimes have more difficulty seeing the subject in full 3D. One reason for this is that your eyes are misaligned, the brain will try to observe things only with a single eye. As if you would close one eye by putting a hand over it. And that is also how art students are instructed to close one eye when trying to portray a three-dimensional image on a two-dimensional canvas. And in the case of artists like Rembrandt suffering from an eye disease would make their brain do that automatically for them without having to close an eye. A little natural advantage for a painter. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of Strabismo di Venere and next time you see some art from the Italian Renaissance period or a self-portrait of Rembrandt, you may want to check if you can discover the asymmetry in their eyes. Finally, if you want to help out the channel, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and leave a comment down below with your thoughts or questions about this video. Thanks for watching.